Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of St. Andrew Podcast. In this episode we talk almost exclusively about photography. Uh, we have a guest on, Casper's uh, brother Bart, who works at Trio Stories. He's got a lot of experience in um, windsurfing event photography, he's done IFCAs and the PWA qualifier and ball. So he gave loads of tips and tricks and just generally good photography advice and we learnt a lot as well, which is really good. Uh, and also just a quick catch up about what's going on here in Tarifa. The wind has been inconsistent. We've had some medium kit days, some big kit days, some foiling days. Uh, it's been a real mixed bag, but we've been making the most of it and enjoying it. We've done some, uh, I've done some official trainings. Casper was ill the last time we had one. And uh, today and tomorrow, it looks like it's full power windy, small kit, probably speed sailing. That's good. And this is actually the third or fourth time we've tried to record this podcast. Because the intro. Well, yeah, because uh, we just ran into some unexpected difficulties. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like we always say that, but we actually have. We uh, we tested the audio, it was all fine, and then suddenly we, we've had some unexpected big noise. And um, So yeah, this is like take three or four. Yeah, take three or four. So, But all in all, this actual episode is really good, filled with good juicy nuggets of information yeah, yeah. we hope you, you learn a lot f- from it and maybe you can take it away and improve your own photography as well mm. and also this episode is sponsored by Foilworks uh, we said it in the last episode but Foilworks are making slalom fins really good like I've actually had more opportunity to test them now and just very positive feedback um, and if you want to check out more information on them it's Foilworks F-O-I-L-W-O-R-X just google it you'll see the information you can even buy the fins straight from the website so you don't have to talk to a human being. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy the episode. Okay, so in this segment uh, we have a guest, uh, Basil, also known as Bart. Uh, he is my brother actually, and um, a, a professional photographer, uh, doing all sorts of uh, photography, but also quite a bit of sport photography, including uh, quite a few windsurfing events uh, in his um, career. career. Uh, so yeah, that would be good to, to ask him for his sort of advice, uh, ideas and, and what gear he uses. So this might give you hopefully some insight into um, what it's like to be a sport photographer, windsurfing photographer, but also you can use these tips to hopefully improve your photography of taking, taking photos of yourself or your friends uh, on the water and out windsurfing. Uh, okay, so uh, hello Basil, can you hear us loud and clear? Hello, hello, I can hear you both very well. Uh, it's good to be here, good to finally be on the infamous uh, Sometimes We Podcast. Um, yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, about, about time we've, uh, we've we've got you on as a guest. Um, yeah, so, well, let's start with um, techniques. So, it's... Um, so photography is is obviously that <clears throat> there's a lot to it. Uh, there's like it's like where do we even start? It's it's definitely very broad. It's a, definitely a very broad matter. Um, I think you know before we get into the more technical aspects, um, it's good to talk kind of about the the creative basics and things that you can kind of do to improve windsurfing photography in particular um, regardless of the camera that you have you know you can you can take some absolutely amazing photographs on on an iPhone um, and yeah so there's a few bits that I would kind of recommend to people Um, one of the main ones is you know you see people getting all these humongous lenses 300 400 mil kind of you know they've got this whole rig and they're, they're shooting from the beach they're miles away and You will, in my opinion, you'll never get a dynamic photograph uh, of a windsurfer if you can't feel that wind in your hair and and you're not, you know, right in that action with them. So, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely what we found as well. Actually, we um, like relying on big zoom lenses and um, like two, three, four hundred millimeter lens, and it just it produces just very average standard photos and looking quite amateur no matter how even if it's an L lens and you've got a good body and stuff and it's just you're you, yeah you're so detached yeah from it's just the, a windsurfer on blue yeah like no sort of 
fore- foreground and depth to it and everything. Yeah, exactly, using, exactly. Using big words here. It's no, no. I mean, it's 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 that it's that idea that you know photographs tell the story of a given situation so if you are miles away from the action and you're completely detached from the action from the adrenaline of it you're not going to get a dynamic photograph you're going to get a chilled you know completely static very, very static, static yeah, yeah. Photo. and they also lose lose scale like yeah. with the long lenses if you're out there actually windsurfing you're like oh the waves were big it was yeah, mega yeah, windy yeah, and yeah. then you look at this photo and it looks like the chop was like yeah, 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 and, and, and I think that, I mean, this applies to all fields of photography, something that I've always been a big advocate for, even, you know, in things like portraiture and things like that. I would always say, you know, if you want to be dynamic, if you want powerful striking imagery, you've got to get closer to your subject. And I don't mean zoom in on your subject, I mean move your feet or, you know, swim or get on a boat or whatever you need for the given circumstances, but you've got to get close to your subject. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Actually, now, nowadays, between me and James, we don't even have any more zoom than 70, 70 millimeters. So our, we don't have any any zoom on our cameras. So we are relying on yeah, focusing on capturing all the photos uh, somehow close up. Like sometimes we end up walking in like waist depth with the DSLRs. Very sketchy. They get almost wet. But um, but it's worth it. And then also now with the housing, um, yeah. So actually. I mean, we don't have a zoom because we can't afford one mainly, but even if we had one, we'd use it very often. Yeah, we would avoid using it. We we, we found it just provides a, uh, produces a quite sort of amateur looking photo. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and like, uh, you know, I've been, I've been keeping tabs on your, on your photography. You know, I've got, I've got notifications on, on both of your Instagrams, on both of your Facebooks, you know. Well, at least we've got one fan then. (laughs) You know, I'm really keeping track. I know what you're wearing. I know what you're wearing right now. So, um, (laughs) <laughs> wow! All right, police, police. Yeah, so so I've been, I've been keeping track on on the photography. And I've got to say, y- you guys are producing some really top stuff, uh, and definitely. Well, we try. De- you know, try, thank you. Yeah. I like the way you use the the housing. You know, not for your hundred percent submerged shots. Your housing is there to protect from any splashes, anything like that. Um, but those half submerged shots, or even not submerged necessarily, but you know, you can tell you're close. You can tell you're in the action. We, we still have actually a lot to learn of the housing, to be honest. We've only really had like one actual photo shoot yeah, of it yeah, and then yeah. like a one little test session. Um, the, I think we'll, we will produce even better yeah, content. Yeah, they're a lot soon. harder to work, to work with than you'd expect. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that kind of, I mean, the housing, that brings me on to my second kind of tip and second um, aspect of, of, of photography. This is kind of similar to getting close to your subject, but this kind of also applies to, to a, a zoom lens. Um, you've got to get low. You've got to get low if you want a dynamic look. Um, this goes to any sort of, you know, this is kind of a basic for any um, for, uh, any um, photography that has uh, fast pace, uh, you know, anything like motorsports, uh, motorbikes, cars, anything, anything like that. When you're wanting to show speed, if you're close to that surface, you give in that that perspective in, into that photo and, and, and you know, you, you, at the end of the day, your subject is going to look faster. And I know you two, you, you two need that help, so. Uh, oh, wow. You know. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's all we have time for then. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so perspective is, is, is important as well. Yeah, not just shooting from eye level, but getting, getting low, getting close, yeah. Basically, if it's not sketchy, it's not going to be a good photo. You know, you've got to be holding that 2,000 pound worth of kit inches above the water, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, tickle I, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got no risk, tickle. no reward, baby. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, uh, noise, noise, and light, lighting uh, as well. So obviously, with windsurfing, um, it's 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 often um, paired with very harsh, difficult lighting conditions. You've got a lot of often in in nice places like the Mediterranean or something, or here in Spain, it will be clear really nice clear bright sky and nice water just reflecting you know the sun is so bright and um it's just so hard to get good shots when it's so bright i mean what we found and what so far and what we we really always try and do is uh you know sunrise or sunset shoots um what, what's your view on this like do you think it's even worth shooting in in sort of like midday or like if you're looking for you know professional quality photos you just does it have to be that golden hour yeah so a golden hour 
it definitely helps uh, enormously. Uh, you know, light is everything in photography. Like you said, basically, the, it is extremely important. And um, you know, when you're shooting events and things like that, then you kind of don't have a choice. So you have to, you know, make do with with what light you've got and what time you know people are racing. Um, but I definitely would say if you're trying to go for that professional editorial polished look then you know it's got to be there or thereabouts golden hour uh, I mean you know if you want to push it there's kind of something a little bit less known called blue hour which is the hour sort of before sunrise or the hour after sunset so it's once the sun has already gone down below the horizon uh, and you, you're still getting uh, a much colder light but uh, you're getting that sort of remnants of, of the sun going down. That, that can produce some very, very interesting and different colours as well. Mm, the only downside to that is obviously you might need kind of slightly better equipment that's going to perform better in low light uh, to get, you know, a, a quality noise free image. But um, yeah, I mean, put it this way, if you're not shooting in exciting dynamic light, you have to compensate for that. Uh, and and you know compensating for that can be quite difficult in terms of creativity when it comes to windsurfing because uh, you know you would need a killer foreground or a really exciting background and you know if you're just out in the middle of the city um, that can that can be tough. Okay. Mm -hmm. so well, how do you cope like when you're let's say uh, photographing an IFCA event? How do you cope with shooting in the middle of the day? Like what do you do to try and make the best images? Yeah, so so um, if I'm shooting in the middle of the day, I will focus rather than on the aesthetic of the image. I'll focus on on you know the action being the the main the main point. So um, you know I'll aim to be on the start vessel or or at uh, at the first jibe mark um, and kind of make up for that you know flat light let's say or, or, or not very interesting light with with getting you know some some killer action um, later on in the day if it's getting you know close to sunset or earlier on uh, near, near a sunrise if, if people are racing early then I might experiment at different points you know for example with getting a wider viewpoint from let's say the third uh, third mark looking at, at the start line and kind of include some more of the of the landscape and, and things like that um, and also a, a big part of it of coping with it as well as is in editing. You know, you can compensate quite a bit if if you're editing your photographs. Um, you know, on a professional software, if you're shooting in, in raw and and you can kind of have a purpose for for, for you know for your editing. So that, yeah, that's how I kind of deal with it. Yeah, shooting in raw makes such a massive difference. Like when we got the housing, we went from using the GoPro, which only takes JPEGs, yeah. to then like the housing doing raw images and it just makes such a massive difference you can just pull so much more detail back in oh yeah yeah i mean it's 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 uh it's you know the kind of bread and butter for a professional photographer uh, uh, sh shooting in raw but it, it, it cannot cannot be um underestimated the 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 sort of the power of raw um how much data the the that format retains and especially in high contrast situations you know when when you've got that big contrast between sometimes the water the windsurfer and the sun or, or or you know the sky the raw can definitely save save an image or, or make or break an image yeah definitely um and speaking of um golden hour and everything as well i think you'd be proud of us because since we've been here for like Nearly two weeks two now. Weeks now we've, yeah. we've done like four, I think. Four, uh, sunrise, four sunrise shoots. shoots. Uh, so we're putting in the effort, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's commitment. That's commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some of them we don't have to get up as early. Like if we're trying to go windsurfing, we get up at six. But if we're doing like yeah. some if we're just doing thing one or lifestyle yeah. thing, then you know we get up just before the sun comes up. But yeah, no, it, it is good. Like um, definitely helps. Uh, cool. Um, what about gear? What about um, what what's your favourite sort of gear to use for uh, windsurfing photography when you go away to the events? So, um, and in terms of events as well, just run through what sort of events you've done so far. It's, it's mainly been the international uh, IFCA events, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've uh, I've covered a few IFCA events. Um, uh, I've been uh, we've been working on on the event at Zoo Station Ball in, in Croatia for a number of years now. 
uh, that was actually kind of our first um, first taste of, of sort of competitive windsurfing. Um, but also last year we we took a, a fairly long trip to the Caribbean islands and and um, got the opportunity to uh, photograph and film the event on Bonaire. Um, so yeah, it's um, I've done a few different things. It, also the PWA uh, qualifier that was the first uh, first ever kind of event of its kind as well in in Ball. So I would say it's um, it's not like my main specialism, but you know I've I've done my fair share of uh, windsurfing photography. I've also I mean I've also done a few kind of private shoots for one of the world's leading windsurfers. I don't know if you've heard of him, Kasper Wozniak. Uh, no, I've never heard of him. Never heard of him. No. Um, um, do, you, do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy like uh, out of all the different photography jobs and and, and like contracts that you have? windsurfing events where's that sort of on the list is it like yeah it's definitely high i mean it's definitely high i enjoy it for many reasons um you know i love the travel element i love you know being out there but it's it's something that really challenges you creatively because you know a five-day event um all day every day of windsurfers hundreds of windsurfers racing in the same spot it can really, really, you know, you could end up with thousands of the same image essentially and just different sale numbers and different sale colours. So I think, in a sense, you know, your day starts pretty early with skippers meeting when you can try and get a few expressions, a few portraits and things like that. Um, so that provides a bit of variation to, into the work. And then, um, you know, a few hours into the racing, you've got your bread and butter kind of competitive stuff and then you can, you know, you can get creative. So. Um, so yeah, good, good. So you enjoy it more than weddings? <laughs> yeah, definitely enjoy it more than weddings. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love doing my wedding stuff, um, but it's let's just say it's 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 that relaxed vibe, you know, outdoors vibe. Significantly less pressure. Um, you know, if someone crashes and you don't get that crash photo, then someone will crash in another 10, 15 minutes. So, yeah, uh, I guess. you know, I, I, I do find that you're always hoping that someone does crash. And, uh, wow. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's why you're hanging around with Casper a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you, do you enjoy watching the racing as well whilst you're there? Definitely, definitely. Um, it does depend on the level. Uh, obviously, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit questionable. Um, sometimes it's it's really exciting and uh, uh yeah that i mean you can you can get you know you can get fed up of it by kind of day five if it's repetitive and it's you know it's not let's say close matched but um i i i'm a big sports fan i you know i i, I love i love my sports so um nice nice yeah uh, and yeah going back to um gear as well because i mentioned gear a moment ago but i guess it got um Lost. Dissolved, lost, and the uh, other questions. Uh, what sort of gear do you have? Like, what what do you mainly use on your um, at a windsurfing event, or what would you recommend? I guess. As and well? also, like, what do you want to have? Like, if you were to do a dream windsurfing event, or like a dream photo shoot for a windsurfer, what gear? If, if money was no object, what would you have? Yeah. Well, um, I'll start with what what I've got and what I use, and then we'll go on to what you know what I'd love to have. Um, so my favourite lens, which I've produced the best kind of photos with, is got to be the um, the seventeen forty, which is a wide angle to standard zoom kind of what you'd call a, a wide like walk around lens. Um, the reason for that is it's my oldest lens, so I don't mind it getting bashed around on a boat and kind of getting a bit wet and whatever. So I'm quite you know daring with it. I'm willing to kind of risk it and stick it where where I wouldn't stick a a more exp a more expensive lens um yeah yeah, yeah. so um you know it, it goes in places where kind of other things don't go um yeah yeah it's it's a girthy lens <laughs> oh, wow, okay now we'll... all right carry on yeah carry on <laughs> we'll cut that we'll cut that lens yeah for um, sure uh, yeah for sure anyway it's, uh, yeah so with that lens i mean it's you know if i'm getting a shot of a windsurfer zooming past me at the start line, which I think is, is one of my favorite photographs I've ever gotten at a windsurfing event at 17 mil. And you know, you can literally read the kind of, read the centimeters, you know, his boom size, then, you know, that is a dynamic photo. You're right in there in the action. Um, and, and I think 
same in Bonaire as well. I took out, took my camera again, like waist sort of deep, uh, right at the start line. I'm right on the sort of water line, gorgeous turquoise water, and again, kind of a panning shot, a little bit of motion blur, another sort of one of my favourites. Um, so that lens definitely, and then the second one, kind of less exciting, but the 7200. Um, you know, you, you've got to have it. Zoom, you've got to have it. Yeah, you've got to have it because you know you you don't get the kind of mobility around a race course um, that you'd want a lot of the time. You know, you, you can be stuck on the start boat, you can be stuck on first mark for an hour, an hour and a half. Um, because you know the, the organization of these events it's 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 stressful it's intense and you've got to kind of be able to adapt and, and get the shots regard regardless so the 7200 is just so versatile um, very fast focusing very good quality and that's so that's my second one I'll definitely say you know you, you've got to have it and the, and the body what camera body do you use so for a long time I was shooting on a 6D, Canon 6D, um, then I'm upgraded to the 5D Mark IV. Um, I'm not, you know, and many people, many sports photographers, they're like obsessed with, you know, the 1DX Mark IIs and the 7D Mark IIs, the kind of classic sports photography cameras, which just rely on the kind of spray and pray tactic of, you know, oh, this has 10 frames per second, this has 15 frames per second, and you click the shutter and you literally create a short film. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I, I think if you're needing that, I don't think, you know, you, 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 you're cut out to, to make striking images. So what, what's your view on the spraying, cold spraying thing? Like, do you spray quite a lot or are you more focused on really just getting no. that, you know, single good nugget? So I, I, t I, t I take a lot of photos. I take a lot of photos throughout the day, but at any given sort of scene, you know, it, when people are approach let's say you've, you know you've got the fleet approaching first mark i'm not going to start shooting when they're miles away and then finish shooting when they're miles away the other side of it and end up with 150 or 200 photos of the same scene and you know in one given sequence like that i will end up with six seven photos and i will manually trigger the shutter each time because i feel that i'm quick enough to react to what's happening rather than having to spray fill up your cards and I also don't like the way autofocus, I mean this is a bit of a personal thing, but I don't like the way autofocus works uh, or lags as, as you're shooting in a very high, high frame rate. So I prefer to have that kind of control of focus, recompose to get, you know, the framing that I want and then fire it away, sometimes in a split second. But I just, I, I like to do it myself. Uh, and, and about the gear that you'd like to have, I mean, um, I, I know you we often talk about housings, don't we? Is, is that what you would? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love. Yeah, I'd love a housing. Absolutely. And how much a is housing. a housing for your At camera body? Yeah, how much, how much does a housing cost for your camera body? It's it's how much like two k or something. I don't know. It's a small fortune. It's basically you need a mortgage and a deposit and all that, and you know you're paying it off 20, 25 years. But um, it, it's not just a lot of money, but the actual market is extremely difficult like it's so tough to find a reputable brand one with you know that's got kind of good reviews that you you know you can see that people have used it and and they can rely on it and it's kind of a, a bit of a bit of a tough market to find a, a suitable housing so that's kind of something that's put me off not just the price tag uh, even though that price tag can go you know well into the thousands of pounds um, you know, I think one I was looking at not long ago was around one and a half thousand pounds. Um, but also just kind of knowing what's reliable and what's going to do the job well and give you access to all your functions and things like that. So, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and what about drones? Uh, what's what's your view about drones? Obviously, there was a massive hype with it at the start. Everyone was, you could even say, overusing it. Um, but nowadays, I think people are really focusing more on the quality, and um, I guess it's harder to get actual, really unique drone footage now because they are so accessible and so many people have them. Yeah, drones. Yeah, yeah, drones. Um, you know, I'll have my drone and a rice cake, and uh, then I'll have my drone, and then about 1 p.m. I'll have my drone. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, there was the, there was an absolute obsession with drone work, and I think that kind of saturated the market so much that it almost, you know, became boring. So at first, if you had a drone, no matter how shy the photo was from the drone, everyone was like, you know, excited, and it's a drone shot, amazing. Now, it's not so easy to, to get a killer drone shot. I still use drones. You've got to push it, you've got to push it, you've got to get creative, you know, drop your shutter, get that motion blur, you know, fly, kind of match, speed match, does a windsurfer, get that blur and, and you know, you have to get more advanced to, to get your payoff, really. Um, yeah, push it low, low on the water, get close, get, you know, trail. Um, you've got to get creative with it and, I mean, I've, I've pushed it too far, I've, you know, I know what it's like to sink a drone, uh, I know what... Uh, so I've uh, I've killed two drones so far. Um, my very first drone died a tragic death um, without even debuting at a, at a competition because it was it was training day. I uh, was getting a little bit confident, you know, hitting them speeds and straight into a tree, and it just bathed in the med. Uh, you know, it, it, yeah, even even rice didn't help. Um, yeah, I mean, we had it imported from Asia and, you know, it, it, it was it was good rice, but no, no, no cigar. And then the second drone, I mean, the second drone I was a, a really, really, we were doing really well with it. We landed it in the boat, you know, kind of mid-action, and then Skipper cranked the, cranked the throttle, um, hit the wave, and uh, the drone was literally turned off in my hand, a little bit of a splash in the wrong place, and game over for that one. I, genuinely that was the most unlucky thing but I mean we managed to get it repaired but you know repairing a drone costs like half its value so yeah. Yeah lads I'm, we're gonna have to wrap up because food's ready so should we do like a bit of a wrapping up thing and then. Yeah okay no worries um yeah well thanks for coming on anyway I think that's has been great. Yeah it's been it's an absolute absolute pleasure. Yeah and I'm sure we'll have you on as a guest again at some point there's so much more to talk about and you know filming as well and yeah, and one thing we haven't touched upon is editing as well, so um, we can kind of touch upon that. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure speaking to you both. We'll speak soon, and uh, game of Call of Duty later, lads. Oh, up. yeah, yeah, for sure, both God later. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, yeah. Bye-bye. All right, cheers. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Farewell. Cheerio. Okay, and that was that segment done. Uh, like we said in the intro, lots of juicy nuggets of information for you there. Yeah, we really learnt a lot more than we actually... Um, I thought I'd learned quite a bit, but I didn't realise how much information Bart would uh, spew onto us. So, it was really great. We're definitely going to have him on again, because photography is such a rich topic. I think we barely even scratched the surface. There's still things to cover, like and editing, filming. And, and then yeah, there's filming. videography and filming and other things. So, there's a lot more to, of that to come, and it's actually very important stuff for... Yeah. If you want to be a sponsored team rider or a professional windsurfer, but also if you just want to hang a good photo on the wall and have a good photo of your windsurfing, so it's all uh, interesting stuff. So we're really happy with how that came out. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and um, I guess uh, that's it for for today's episode. Um, see you next week. Next week, peace.